Chapter 14, More Shaken Than She Cared to Admit, Eve entered Drive Myra's office the following morning, and Myra's invitation, she took a seat folded her hands to keep them from any telltale restless movements. Have you had time to profile? You requested urgent status. Indeed, Myra had been up most of the night, reading reports, using her training and her psych diagnostics to compose a profile. I'd like more time to work on this, but I can give you an overall view. Okay. Eve leaned forward. What is he? He is almost certainly correct. Traditionally, Crimes of this nature are not committed within the same sex. He's a man, above average intelligence, with sociopathic and voyeuristic tendencies. He's bold, but not a risk taker, though he probably sees himself as such. In her graceful way, she linked her fingers together, crossed her legs. His crimes are well thought out, whether or not he has sex with his victims is incidental. His pleasure and satisfaction comes from the selection, the preparation and the execution. Why prostitutes? Control. Sex is control. Death is control. And he needs to control people, situations. The first murder was probably impulse. Why? He was caught off guard by the violence, his own capability of violence. He had a reaction, a jerk of a movement, the indrawn breath, the shaky exhale. He recovered, systematically protected himself. He doesn't want to be caught, but he wants and needs to be admired feared. Hence the recordings. He uses collector's weapons, she continued in that same moderate voice, a status symbol of money. Again, power and control. He leaves them behind so that they can show he's unique among men. He appreciates the overt violence of guns and the impersonal aspect of them. The kill from a comfortable distance, the aloofness of that. He's decided on the number he'll kill to show that he's organized, precise, ambitious. Could he have had the six women in mind from the beginning? Six targets? The only verified connection between the three victims is their profession, Meyer began, and saw that Eve had already reached the same conclusion, but wanted it confirmed. He had the profession in mind. It would be my opinion the women are incidental. It's likely he holds a high-level position, certainly a responsible one. If he has a sexual or marriage partner, he or she is subservient. His opinion of women is low. He debases and humiliates them after death to show his disgust and his superiority. He doesn't perceive these as crimes but as moments of personal power, personal statement. The prostitute, male or female, remains a profession of low esteem in many minds. Women are not his equals a prostitute is beneath his contempt, even when he uses her for his own release. He enjoys his work. Lieutenant. He enjoys it very much. Is it work, doctor, or a mission? He has no mission. Only ambitions. It isn't religion, not a moral statement, not a societal stance. No, the statement's personal, the stance is control. I would agree, Myra said, pleased with the straightforward workings of Eve's mind. It is, to him, an interest, a new and somewhat fascinating hobby that he has discovered himself adept at. He's dangerous, Lieutenant not simply because he has no conscience, but because he's good at what he does, and his success feeds him. He'll stop at six, Eve murmured, with this method, but he'll find another creative way to kill. He's too vain to go back on his word to the authorities, but he's enjoying his hobby too much to give it up. Myra angled her head. One would think, Lieutenant, that you've already read my report. I believe you're coming to understand him very well. Eve nodded. Yeah? piece by piece. There was a question she had to ask, one she had suffered over through a long, sleepless night. To protect himself, to make the game more difficult, would he hire someone, pay someone to kill a victim he'd chosen while he was allied? Number. Myra's eyes softened with compassion as she watched Eve's close in relief. In my opinion, he needs to be there, to watch, to record most of all to experience. He doesn't want vicarious satisfaction. Nor does he believe you'll outsmart him. He enjoys watching you sweat, Lieutenant. He's an observer of people, and I believe he focused on you the moment he learned you were primary. He studies you, and knows you care. He sees that as a weakness to exploit, and does so by presenting you with the murder so not at your place of work, but where you live. He sent the last disc. It was in my morning mail drop 
posted from a midtown slot about an hour after the murder. We had my building under surveillance. He'd have figured that and found a way to get around it. He's a born button pusher. Meyer handed Diva Disc and a hard copy of the initial profile. He is an intelligent and a mature man. Mature enough to restrain his impulses. A man of means and imagination. He would rarely show his emotions. Rarely have them to show. It's an intellect with Hema and, as you said, Vanity, I appreciate you getting this for me so quickly. Eve, Myra said before Eve could rise. There's an addendum. The weapon that was left at the last murder. The man who committed these crimes would not make so foolish a mistake to leave a traceable weapon behind. The diagnostic rejected it at a probability of 93.4%. It was there. Eve said flatly. I bagged it myself. As I'm sure he wanted you to. It's likely he enjoyed implicating someone else to further bog the system, twist the investigation process. And it's likely he chose this particular person to upset you, to distract you, even to hurt you. I've included that in the profile. Personally, I want to tell you that I'm concerned about his interest in you. I'm going to see to it that he's a hell of a lot more concerned with my interest in him. Thank you. Doctor, Eve went directly to Whitney's office to deliver the psychiatric profile. With any luck at all, Feeney would have verified her suspicions about the purchase and delivery of the murder weapon. If she was right, and she had to believe she was, that and the weight of Myra's profile would clear Rourke. She already knew, by the way Rourke had looked at Hera through here during their last transmission that her professional duties had destroyed whatever personal bridge they'd been building. She was only more sure of it when she was cleared into the office, and found Rourke there. He must have used a private transport, she decided. It would have been impossible for him to have arrived so quickly through normal channels. He only inclined his head, said nothing as she crossed to give Commander Whitney the disc and file. Dr. Myra's profile. Thank you. Lieutenant. His eyes shifted to Rourke's. Lieutenant Dallas will show you to an interview area. We appreciate your cooperation. Still, he said nothing, only rose and waited for Eve to go to the door. You're entitled to have your attorney present. She began as she called for an elevator. I'm aware of that. Am I being charged with any crime? Lieutenant? Number. Cursing him, she stepped inside requested area b this is just standard procedure his silence continued until she wanted to scream damn it i don't have a choice here don't you he murmured and preceded her out of the car when the doors opened this is my job the doors of the interview area whisked open then snapped closed behind them the surveillance cameras any petty thief would know were hidden in every wall engaged automatically eve took a seat at a small table and waited for him to sit across from her these proceedings are being recorded do you understand yes lieutenant dallas id 5347 bq interviewer subject Rourke. Initial date and time subject has waived the presence of an attorney is that correct yes the subject has waived the presence of an attorney. Are you acquainted with a licensed companion, Georgie Castle? Number. Have you been to 156 West 89th Street? No, I don't believe I have. Do you own a Ruger P90, automatic combat weapon, circa 2005? It's likely that I own a weapon of that make and era. I'd have to check to be certain. But for argument's sake, we'll say I do. When did you purchase said weapon? Again. I'd have to check. He never blinked, never took his eyes from hers. I have an extensive collection, and don't carry all the details of it in my head or in my pocket log. Did you purchase said weapon at Sotheby's? It's possible. I often add to my collection through auctions. Silent auctions? Occasionally. Her stomach, already knotted, began to roll. Did you add to your collection with the aforesaid weapon at a silent auction at Sotheby's on October 2nd of last year? Rourke slipped his log out of his pocket, skimmed back to the date. Number. I don't have a record of that. It seems I was in Tokyo on that date, engaged in meetings. You can verify that easily. Damn you, damn you, she thought. You know that's no answer. Representatives are often used in auctions. They are. Watching her dispassionately. He tucked the log away again. If you check with Sotheby's, you'll be told that I don't use representatives. When I decide to acquire something, it's because I've seen Ida with my own eyes. Gauged it's worth to me. If and when I decide to bid, I do so personally. In a silent auction, I would either attend, or participate by link. Isn't it traditional to use a sealed electronic bid, 
or a representative authorized to go to a certain ceiling. I don't worry about traditions over much. The fact is, I could change my mind as to whether I want something, for one reason or another, it could lose its appeal. She understood the underlying meaning of his statement, tried to accept that he was done with her. The aforesaid weapon, registered in your name and purchased through silent auction at Sotheby's in October of last year was used to murder Georgie Castle at approximately 7.30 last evening. You and I both know I wasn't in New York at 7.30 last evening. His gaze skimmed over her face. You traced the transmission, didn't you? She didn't answer. Couldn't. Your weapon was found at the scene. Have we established it was mine? Who has access to your collection? I do. Only I do. Your staff? Number. If you recall, Lieutenant, my display cases are locked. Only I have the code. Codes can be broken. Unlikely, but possible, he agreed. However, unless my palm print is used for entry, any case that is opened by any means triggers an alarm. God damn it. Give me an opening. Couldn't he see she was pleading with him, trying to save him? Alarms can be bypassed. True. When any case is opened without my authorization, all entry to the room is sealed off. There's no way to get out, and security is notified simultaneously. I can assure you, Lieutenant, it's quite foolproof. I believe in protecting what's mine. She glanced up as Feeney came in. He jerked his head, and she rose. Excuse me. When the doors shut behind them, he dipped his hands into his pockets. You called it. Dallas. Electronic bid. Cash deal. Delivered to an EPS. The head snoot at Sotheby's claims this was an unusual procedure for Rourke. He always attends in person, or by direct link. Never used this line before in the 15 years or so he's dealt with them. She allowed herself one satisfied breath. That checks with Rourke's statement. What else? Ran an undercheck on the registration. The Ruger only appeared on the books in Rourke's name a week ago. No way in hell we can pin it on him. The commander says to spring him. She couldn't afford to be relieved, not yet, and only nodded. Thanks, Feeney. She slipped back inside. You're free to go. He stood as she stepped backward through the open door. Just like that? We have no reason. At this time, to detain or inconvenience you any further. Inconvenience? He walked toward her until the doors snicked shut at his back. Is that what you called this? An inconvenience? He was. She told herself entitled to his anger, to his bitterness. She was obliged to do her job. Three women are dead. Every possibility has to be explored. And I'm just one of your possibilities? He reached out, the sudden violent movement of his hands closing over her shirt surprising her. Is that what it comes down to between us? I'm a cop. I can't afford to overlook anything, to assume anything, to trust. He interrupted. Anything, or anyone. If it had leaned a little the other way, would you have locked me up? Would you have put me in a cage, Eve? Back off. Eyes blazing. Feeney strode down the corridor. Back fucking off. Leave us alone, Feeney. Hell I will. Ignoring Eve, he shoved against Rourke. Don't you come down on her. Big shot. She went to bat for you. And the way things stand, it could have cost her the job. Simpson's already prepping her as sacrificial lamb because she was dumb enough to sleep with you. Shut up, Feeney. God damn it. Dallas. I said shut up. Come again. Detached. She looked at Rourke. The department appreciates your cooperation, she said to Rourke and, prying his hand from her shirt turned and hurried off. What the hell do you mean by that? Rourke demanded. Feeney only snorted. I got better things to do than waste my time on you. Rourke backed him into a wall. You're going to be free to book me for assaulting an officer in about two breaths, Feeney. Tell me what you meant about Simpson. You want to know, big shot? Feeney looked around for a place of comparative privacy, jerked ahead toward the door of a men's room. Come into my office, and I'll tell you. She had the cat for company. Eve was already regretting the fact that she'd have to turn the useless, overweight feline over to Georgie's family. She should have done so already, but found solace in even a pitiful furball's worth of companionship. Nonetheless, she was nothing but irritated by the beep of her intercom. Human company was not welcomed, particularly, as she checked her viewing screen. Rourke. She was raw enough to take the coward's way. Leaving the summons unanswered, she walked back to the couch, curled up with the cat. If she'd had a blanket handy, she'd have pulled it over her head. The sound of her locks disengaging moments later had her springing to her feet. You son of a bitch, 
she said when Rourke walked in, you crossed too many lines. He simply tucked his master code back in his pocket. Why didn't you tell me? I don't want to see you. She hated that her voice sounded desperate rather than angry. Take a hint. I don't like being used to hurt you. You do fine on your own. You expect me to have no reaction when you accuse me of murder? When you believe it. I never believed it. It came out in a hiss. A passionate whisper. I never believed it. She repeated. But I put my personal feelings aside and did my job. Now get out. She headed for the door. When he grabbed her, she swung out, fast and hard. He didn't even attempt to block the blow. Calmly he wiped the blood from his mouth with the back of his hand while she stood rigid, her breathing fast and audible. Go ahead, he invited. Take another shot. You needn't worry. I don't hit Wilmina or murder them. Just leave me alone. She turned away gripped the back of the sofa where the cat sat eyeing her coolly. The emotions were welling up, threatening to fill her chest to bursting. You're not going to make me feel guilty for doing what I had to do. You sliced me in two, Eve. It infuriated him anew to admit it, to know she could so easily devastate him. Couldn't you have told me you believe in me? Number. She squeezed her eyes tight. God. Don't you realize it would have been worse if I had? If Whitney couldn't believe I'd be objective. If Simpson even got a whiff that I showed you any degree of preferential treatment, it would have been worse. I couldn't have moved on the psych profile so fast. Couldn't have put Feeney on a priority basis to check the trail of the weapon to eliminate probable cause. I hadn't thought of that, he said quietly. I hadn't thought. When he laid a hand on her shoulder, she shrugged it off, turned on him with blazing eyes. God damn it. I told you to bring an attorney. I told you, if Feeney hadn't hit the right buttons, they could have held you. You're only out because he did, and the profile didn't fit. He touched her again she jerked back again. It appears I didn't need an attorney. All I needed was you. It doesn't matter. She battled control back into place. It's done. The fact that you have an unassailable alibi for the time of the murder, and that the gun was an obvious plant shifts the focus away from you. She felt sick, unbearably tired. It may not eliminate you completely. But Dr. Myra's profiles are gold. Nobody overturns her diagnostics. She's eliminated you, and that carries a lot of weight with the department and the PA. I wasn't worried about the department or the PA. You should have been. It seems you've worried enough for me. I'm very sorry. Forget it. I've seen shadows under your eyes too often since I've known you. He traced a thumb along them. I don't like being responsible for the ones I see now. I'm responsible for myself. And I had nothing to do with putting your job in jeopardy. Damn Feeney, she thought viciously. I make my own decisions. I pay my own consequences. Not this time, he thought. Not alone. The night after we'd been together, I called. I could see you were worried, but you brushed it off. Feeney told me exactly why you were worried that night. Your angry friend wanted to pay me back for making you unhappy. He did. Feeney had no right or perhaps not. He wouldn't have had to if you'd confided in me. He took both her arms to stop her quick movement. Don't turn away from me, he warned, his voice low. You're good at shutting people out, Eve. But it won't work with me. What did you expect? That I'd come crying to you. Aroark, you seduced me, and now I'm in trouble. Help. The hell with that. You didn't seduce me. I went to bed with you because I wanted to. Wanted to enough that I didn't think about ethics. I got slammed for it, and I'm handling it. I don't need help. Don't want it, certainly. Don't need it. She wouldn't humiliate herself by struggling away now, but stood passive. The commander's satisfied that you're not involved in the murders. You're clear, so other than what the department will officially term an error in judgment on my part, so am I. If I'd been wrong about you, it'd be different. If you'd been wrong about me, it would have cost you your badge. Yes, I'd have lost my badge. I'd have lost everything. I'd have deserved to. But it didn't happen, so it's over. Move on. Do you really think I'm going to walk away? It weakened her, that soft, gentle lilt that came into his voice. I can't afford you, Rourke. I can't afford to get involved. He stepped forward, laid his hands on the back of the couch, caged her in. I can't afford you, either. It doesn't seem to matter. Luca I'm sorry I hurt you, he murmured. Very sorry that I didn't trust you, then accused you of not trusting me. I didn't expect you to think any differently. To act any differently. That stung more than the blow to the face. Number. I'm sorry for that, 
2. You risked a great deal for me. Why? There were no easy answers. I believed you. He pressed his lips to her brow. Thank you. It was a judgment call, she began, letting out a shaky breath when he touched his mouth to her cheek. I'm going to stay with you tonight. Then to her temple. I'm going to see that you sleep. Sex as a sedative? He frowned but brushed his lips slightly over hers, if you like. He lifted her off her feet, flustering her. Let's see if we can find the right dosage. Later, with the light still on low, he watched her. She slept face down, a limp sprawl of exhaustion. To please himself, he stroked a hand down her back a smooth skin, slim bones, lean muscle. She didn't stir. Experimentally, he let his fingers come through her hair. Thick as mink belt, shades of aged brandy and old gold poorly cut. It made him smile as he traced those fingers over her lips, full, firm, fiercely responsive. However surprised he was that he'd been able to take her beyond what she'd experienced before, he was overwhelmed by the knowledge that had, unknowingly, taken him. How much farther, he wondered, would they go? He knew it had ripped him when he'd believed she'd thought him guilty. The sense of betrayal, disillusionment was huge, weakening and something he hadn't felt in too many years to count. She'd taken him back to a point of vulnerability he'd escaped from. She could hurt him. They could hurt each other. That was something he would have to consider carefully. But at the moment, the pressing question was who wanted to hurt them both, and why. He was still gnawing at the problem when he took her hand, linked fingers, and let himself slide into sleep with her.